Aloha, everyone. Hope you're having a glorious day. This is chapters two and three of Revelation. And I am glad you are on this journey, reading these chapters alongside of figuring out and discussing, talking about some of the imagery, symbols, and things that can be a bit confusing. At least it was for me when I first went through this. So a bit about the historical context before we dive into chapters two and three. So Rome was the eternal city. It was called Roma Eterna, chosen and favored by the gods. And it brought peace, stability, and order throughout the entire world called Pax Romana. And there was emperor worship. So all cities had imperial temples, shrines, and altars. The coinage hailed the emperor. And the loyalty to Rome was enforced by local authority. So as Christians, you could choose one of two things. Loyalty, which Laodicea is condemned by Jesus for getting wealthy off of Roman unjust economic system. Or, and, and to that, you know, Jesus in Revelation issues a warning of repentance. There's a second response to this, which is accept the persecution, ostracism, oppression, especially economic, just like Smyrna. So Revolution, Revelation, Jesus gives encouragement and exhortation to the Christians who are choosing the way against culture. So these seven churches located in modern-day Turkey, Jesus addresses. And they're Ephesus, the loveless church, Smyrna, the persecuted church, Pergamum, the compromising church, Thyatira, the corrupt church, Sardis, the dead church, Philadelphia, the faithful church, and Laodicea, the lukewarm church. So in Ephesus, they had lost their first love. That was God and Christ. And it came from at the cost of, uh, you know, this was the most prominent uh, city. It hosted a temple to the goddess Artemis. And it was the center of em emperor cult. Um, it endured hardships and worked hard, not tolerating falsehoods, from the apostles and resisted the Nicolaitans. Probably uh, they, the Nicolaitans were teaching Christians to accommodate to the pagan Roman world. Then we have Smyrna. Christ identifies himself as the one who overcame death because they are facing death. They're physically poor, but they're spiritually wealthy because they don't participate in the Roman imperial economy and suffer hostility from the Jewish synagogue of Satan. Now their suffering is limited to 10 days, which uh, speaks to the time of testing in Daniel 1, 12 to 16. Uh, so we see there was persecution by these Christians, not only by Rome, but by the, the Jewish uh, uh, the Jewish temple and the Jewish people living in these cities. Now, we come to Pergamum, and Pergamum is compromising with pagan religious ceremonies and Roman, the Roman Empire. And the goal is to repent, to refuse to compromise. Uh, he says, for those who do, they get the hidden manna, the life, and a white stone, which means an entrance to a banquet. You would have your name on it. So he wants to invite you into the banquet wedding feast of the Lamb. A white stone was also used for a vote of acquittal. So if you are found blameless by having your trust, hope, and faith in Christ, you are given a vote of acquittal from the judge being God. Now, Thyatira, uh, they were commended for love, faithfulness, service, and endurance. But they tolerated Jezebel. Now, Jezebel led Israelites into sexual immorality and idolatry. And the goal 
for pointing this out. Jesus has a goal in mind, which is repentance. Repent. Come out of the world. Don't compromise with the world. Don't compromise with their values. If you think about what's being put forth in our culture, uh, what are you being called out from? Sardis, uh, there's no accommodation, only rebuke, because they're spiritually on the verge of death. They're void of a witness. Christ calls them to wake up, because he's coming unexpectedly. And then Philadelphia. And the, this church holds the keys of David. They are given the authority to give entrance into the kingdom of God. This is amazing. But it's also, they're also pointed out that the source of the trouble is the Jewish synagogue. So we learn it's not only Rome, but it's the Jewish synagogue that's coming against them. In Laodicea, there's no commendation. They're called lukewarm because they're useless. They're worthless as, as a witness. This is in opposition to hot water, which has a use of cold water. Um, and so Jesus knocks outside the door to share in the banquet. Uh, and he's, they're being called to repent of their self-sufficiency. Well, you know, we're so strong and good and powerful and knowing and competent and wealthy that we don't really need a, to be saved. We don't really need a savior. So the whole point of Revelation in these two chapters shows us the central question, which is, who is in control? Who is worthy of our allegiance? And we, the church, respond in obedience. It's about what is the response to this. Now, we critique ourselves for our own compromise. We commit with the world. And when we don't obey Jesus Christ only, we are putting the world above Christ. The opposite is condemning the world, exalting ourselves. Now, only God judges the world, and that is the point, that we should put our allegiance in Christ alone. Look forward to discussing the next chapter with you.